When I returned to Australia in 2003, after a wonderful six-month stint as a Fulbright Scholar at Georgetown University in Washington, DC, my family and I were severely jet-lagged. So by the time we made it to dinner, our then two-year-old was sound asleep. So my husband, over dinner, turned to our four-year-old and asked her, how would you describe your brother? She stopped and reflected and proclaimed, he's a very happy boy who likes eating meat and he's an Australian. Well, I was taken aback. How many four-year-olds would think to identify by their nationality? But that Fulbright experience benefited all of us. She was, at an early age, able to recognise from her preschool experience that in some ways she was different. She was an Australian. But that in so many other ways, she was the same. There was empathy and transformation. I was working then and have continued to work on questions of citizenship and globalisation. And this has become even more pressing over the past few years with concerns about terrorism. My message tonight is that the focus on security and terrorism has distorted our discussions on citizenship. Citizenship is a device for inclusion. It is a frame for empathy and transformation. But instead, over the past few years, leaders all around the world have focused on citizenship as exclusion, which has led to a vulnerability for dual citizens in Australia. I'm interested in this room. How many of you actually hold more than one citizenship? So we'll look around. A significant number. And then if I move to ask how many of you know other people who are dual citizens in Australia, let's now raise our hands. Of course, we all do. We live in a multicultural society. And this is a good thing. It's positive to be a dual citizen. There are so many benefits. We can travel, we can connect to more than one country. We can also benefit Australia by enriching Australia's sense of itself in an international world. However, over the last couple of years, our politicians and representatives have used the device of citizenship as a form of exclusion and of concentrating on questions of allegiance in being concerned about the security of Australian citizens, both here and abroad. In fact, at the end of 2015, the government introduced an amendment to the Australian Citizenship Act. It is now the case that if you are a dual citizen and you go overseas and commit certain terrorist offences, that you will be subject to the loss of your Australian citizenship, even if you were born in Australia. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not condoning that activity in any sense. But the real question is, is citizenship the correct device for punishing those individuals? Moreover, does stripping them of their citizenship necessarily protect us anymore? Indeed, as uh, individuals from Australia travel overseas often, how much more protected are they if those individuals are still out there without the connection of the Australian government to manage their activity? But there is an even more significant issue in my view, and that is that it is only dual citizens who will be subject to the loss of their citizenship. If you look at the person next to you, 
and think. One of you is a sole Australian citizen and the other is a dual citizen and the two of you conduct exactly the same activity overseas, only the dual citizen will lose their Australian citizenship. Now, the reason for this is because Australia, rightly in my view, is a signatory to the Convention on the Reduction of Statelessness. So the argument was successfully put at the time of the discussion of this new provision that we could not strip sole Australian citizens who conduct that activity overseas of their citizenship because that would leave them stateless. And being stateless, of course, is not a positive position to be in. But it reminds us of the significance of the status of citizenship. So we have created an environment where it is no longer secure, we are no longer secure as dual citizens in the protection of that very significant status. So why this move and concern about dual citizenship? Well, in a time of questions of allegiance, there is an easy avenue for politicians to use that device to proclaim a sense of action. And there are many people in society who question dual citizenship. If we go back to the family environment, we can think of the two different responses to dual citizenship in the following way. If you think of citizenship like marriage, then the notion of only having one partner, one citizenship, makes sense. However, if you think of citizenship more like parenthood, we all know that we can have more than one child without that undermining our sense of commitment and loyalty and concern for any of our children. So whilst our daughter on that evening had the sole attention of her parents, she also had the security of knowing that her brother would be awake before too long to share that love and attention. And I believe that we should be campaigning our politicians and our representatives to recognise that we must think of dual citizenship like parenthood and to resist these moves towards using citizenship as a device of exclusion. We should return to affirming the multicultural nature of Australia and resist the resistance to dual citizenship.